Welcome to Cord Killers Reckoning. The world of entertainment is turned upside down, and we're just trying to find out how to watch the stuff, what we want, where we want, whenever we want. I'm Tom Merritt. Brian, where's the good stuff? Oh, man, you know where the good stuff is, which is why we go on a supply run. <laughs> future events such as these will affect you in the future. Netflix released the first engagement report that it plans to publish twice a year. The report this time will detail what people watched from January to June 2023. So the first half of this year, uh, it shows the hours watched. That's the main thing. How many hours were watched? Uh, it also gives you the release date. Uh, and indicates if it was available globally or not. Uh, so it's pretty simple. The most watched content in the report is season one of The Night Agent. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, it's a thriller about an FBI agent getting swept up into a conspiracy. I, I know that doesn't really tell you anything, but that's what it's about. Uh, it had 812 million hours viewed. Following that was Ginny and Georgia season two. With 665.1 million hours, uh, that's a heartfelt story about small town New England. Uh, and then The Glory, season one, 622.8 million. Uh, that is a Korean story about revenge uh, when you're an adult on people who bullied you in high school. Wednesday, season one, follows that with 507.7 million. That's the Adams Family spinoff. And rounding out the top five is Queen Charlotte, a Bridgerton story at 503 million hours. List goes on for 18,000 titles, and we're going to talk about every single one of them. You, season... F oh, Brian, sorry, you were going to say something? Oh, no, 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 no. What, what's funny is when you said 18,000 titles, I thought that was like a, a gross exaggeration, but then I was like, nope, I believe that's factually accurate. There are 18,000 no. titles. Basically, anything that got 100,000 hours or more of, of viewing shows up in this report. Um, oh, uh, okay, so let's play a little game, and, and I'm going to exclude Wednesday from this because uh, Wednesday was heavily promoted. Uh, ev everybody knew it was coming, but if, if we're going to go through this list here, uh, outside of Wednesday, uh, when do we encounter – <laughs> Here, I'll put the numbers on there as well. Uh, uh, at the top, we have The Night Agent, never heard of it. Ginny and Georgia, never heard of it. The Glory, Glory Season 1, never heard Ding! of it. Okay, I wait. watched that. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe that, that was actually one of your picks, right? Yeah, I did mention it on what we're watching on Court Killers. Okay, and then be, uh, below that, we have Wednesday, which I did yep. hear of. Queen Charlotte, uh, Bridgerton Story, nope. Uh, you, Season 4, nope. Uh, <laughs> Lorena Del Sur, Season and three nope outer banks jenny and georgia fubar manifest kaleidoscope oh, you know manifest you've heard of manifest I, i'm pretty sure and uh, kaleidoscope i didn't recognize my name but that's the one where you can watch it in any order oh yeah and, and we talked about how they attempted to do the same thing with um uh, arrested development right yeah 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 uh crash course in romance uh love is blind uh, beef season one the diplomat luther fake profile oh, you missed the mother that's the first movie on here uh, movies are at a disadvantage in, in a rank of hours viewed because a movie is only two hours and then you're done, whereas a TV series has multiple episodes at an hour, an hour and a half piece. What uh, uh, what about XO Kitty or Extraction 2 or Dr. Cha? Any of those? I know Dr. Cha. I didn't watch it, uh, but but I, I did know of that. I, I knew of Shadow and Bone. I did not know XO Kitty. <laughs> Uh, um, yeah. Outer Banks, Sweet, Sweet Tooth, You People, Perfect Match, Sex Life, The Ma the Marked Heart, Murder Mystery, The Circus. We're not kidding. We're going to read all 18,000. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I just want to get far enough to where we have enough territory that we could talk about what threads we're detecting in here. Uh, uh, Pablo Escobar, El Patron del Mal. What's weird is like that's what Narcos was based on, right? That yeah. that, that was the companion to that. Uh, Never have I ever your Ooh, place or I mine. I know that one. Yeah, Eileen watched that one. Uh, uh, is is that American or or from overseas? Yeah, I think it's a. I think it's set in America and it's it's a, a teen teen like adult high school teen young adult that's what i was looking for okay we're almost up to 50 and i'm not seeing any of our classics that that would appeal to uh, wednesday my and bridgerton so far yeah uh once we get past 50 we see emily in paris was pretty big that's that's in there 
uh, Paw Patrol, I know only because I have children. Sure. Glass Onion. I watch Alchemy of Souls, parts one and two. I, I would say number 58, Glass on Onion, uh, 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 although, again, it starts at line six. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah. around right, 50. Because it's a movie, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and because we talked well, about it. Black Mirror season six. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, uh, I've... Tom, I'm picking yes. up on a thread here. Why are so many of the titles you and I are able to recognize so low on the list? Because we are seeing through data that Netflix is, in fact, as big as broadcast or at least the most popular cable television, which means that the shows people watch aren't necessarily the shows that some people talk about. Uh, the, the, what I'm trying to say is, in the past, we've thought about like, oh, a show's popular because a bunch of people on social media talk about them a lot. I think that only show, what this shows is that what people are saying on social media is not representative of what's actually happening in the world. Uh, it might have been more of an overlap back when Netflix was a little more niche, right? When Netflix was something that only people who were really into technology and therefore more likely to post on social media uh, were, were going to watch it. Netflix is mainstream now. Everybody has Netflix. And the, the fact is, not everybody goes to Facebook, Instagram, Threads, X, whatever, and talks about the shows they watch. A lot of times people use TV, Brian, to just watch, and they don't want to talk about it later. So it, it, it makes me wonder um, uh, uh, how, how much, I mean, these are no, no BS most viewer minutes, full stop, yeah. right? This is total enga engagement. 100,000 hours viewed for the night agent. So you can say, as Brian and I just did, uh, never heard of it. All you want, plenty of people have heard of it and watched it. Uh, so, so. <laughs> in terms of, uh, I, I, I don't know what perspective to take. Do we take the consumer's perspective of like, well, this is a bunch of stuff I ain't never heard of. Do we take the stockholder perspective of, well, that's a lot of engagement with stuff I ain't never heard of. Do we take the global in, or the Netflix perspective and say, turns out there's a lot of things people want that most people ain't never heard of. But not most people. Most people have heard of this because it's got 812 million hours viewed. So when you say most people, what are you trying to say? I think maybe we try to take the perspective of the person who actually watched The Night Agent, which is not us, but it actually is most people. We're the minority here. Uh, I, I, I don't like to acknowledge that, but I cannot <laughs> refute your logic. <laughs> uh, and, and I think it's interesting that uh, I am definitely the outlier in our group of friends in that I watch Korean dramas. And I'm finding lots of shows I watch on here in that perspective. The Glory up there at number three. Physical 100, I didn't watch, but Eileen did. Crash Course in Romance, uh, definitely on the list. Dr. Cha, like I mentioned, I heard of. I watched Alchemy of Souls. So these are shows that are, again, very widely watched, but not talked about in a certain in a certain niche. And, and that niche could be just you and I and our, our demographic and circle of friends. It could also, I think, also be the niche of social media, which is an echo chamber where everyone wants to agree with each other and slag on the same things and say the same things are great. And so it makes it feel like it's more popular when it's really not. Well, and uh, you bring up a good point that we're all hardwired to pay attention to our own bubbles. And we've talked before about how the one thing that I desperately want is to be exposed to content that's outside of my bubble, um, which is interesting because when I log on to Netflix, I can't name a one uh, – the, the vast majority of these are things that, that I've never been invited to by Netflix. Right, because so Netflix it's like, isn't show. That's the other interesting thing, right? Right. At least with broadcast television, even if you weren't watching Dynasty, you'd heard of it because you were shown it, right? When you were watching whatever you were watching, they might have ran an ad for it or it was mentioned in, in, a, in a talk show or something like that. With Netflix, 
you only get shown the stuff that Netflix thinks you're interested in. So it's not going to promote the night agent or Ginny and Georgia or even the glory to you unless it thinks you're interested in it, which again makes you feel like, well, Netflix has these shows. That's what Netflix is about when in fact it's a lot more than that. So, so let's talk about the fact that um, you, you've heard this from me for half a decade where it's like I'm uncomfortable, as I put it, being bubbled. I, I don't want to be locked into a cage where I'm seeing the same content over and over and over again, whereas it seems like I'm unusual in the world in that regard. Like, should Netflix be exposing? Because clearly these are beloved by more people. Like, like clearly they're feeding us, uh, or at least me, my de demographic, when I log in, it's feeding me previews to things it thinks I'll like. And yeah. it's like, well, well, but if that's not what the rest of the world likes, why not try on for size seducing me into watching some of that stuff? Why? Why should they? I, I, I mean, <laughs> uh, I guess it would be the difference between a short-term play and a long-term play. The short-term play totally makes sense. Just, just baby wants candy, give baby candy, right? But, long, but, but now I feel like I've been kept on the outside, and and I, I, it hasn't recognized uh, that that given the opportunity, I would like some more interesting well, out of the box content. Uh, I mean, but would you? I don't know. I, like if I, they showed you Ginny and Georgia, would you be like, cool, this is great. I'm glad I was showing this this New England small town story. Or would you go, why are, you, why are they showing me this? I'm not interested in this at all. You know what? If, if, if we're talking real here, you, Tom Merritt, already filled that role for me. You caused me to try on some vegetables that I would normally sure. never try on. And uh, I wonder if <laughs> algorithmically... I'm imagining you in, in a pantsuit made of like leeks and carrots now. I, 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 oh, no, I'll get it. I have one. <laughs> don't, don't you worry. But, <laughs> but um, uh, uh, I don't know. I, I, uh, but, is, when you, but listen to yourself. When you say it's vegetables... It sounds like, well, it's something I don't want to eat, but I should. Yeah. Right. Netflix doesn't want that. That that's going to make you cancel Netflix. Like you might not, you might hate yourself for not wanting the vegetables, but you're not going to want them. Netflix survives by making you feel like every time you turn on Netflix, it's showing you something cool and it will show you things outside of the box in as much as that is something you want and are delighted by, but it's not going to show you something so far outside of the box that you're going to be like, why am, why am I seeing this? I have no interest in this. And so the only thing left of the, of, of what we're saying that we haven't talked about is why is it that when you see something as popular and you don't know it, you feel weird or odd or left out? Uh, well, it, it, uh, I, I think the short answer is that it reveals a gap in your own understanding of the universe, right? It, it shines a spotlight on the fact that you don't know about this thing. But in terms of why Netflix would want to do it, uh, I think this is something that Disney Plus has handled very, very well in that there's a little bit – it's it's not all uh, homogeneous. There's a lot of heterogeneity. I, I don't know if I'm using the right emphasis on the the right syllables but but uh but uh disney plus has a fairly diverse set of verticals within it and i think netflix would benefit from kind of kicking me off guard because otherwise i'll become convinced that netflix is just the one place where they keep trying to get me to watch the what was it the uh, the umbrella society or whatever that movie uh, that show was uh-huh um, what, and why do you say that? Because they kept suggesting the Umbrella Society and you didn't want to watch it? Uh, I did try to watch it, but it keeps on trying to feed me the same thing. That That's yeah, appropriate so that's for my demographic. That's algorithm, right? Well, um, uh, l let me put it this way. Um, uh, YouTube highly encourages you to make the same content over and over and over and over again. Uh, but I have found that by shaking things up, you kind of figure out who's really a fan of Brian Brushwood and who's just there for the magic tricks, right? right. And I think Netflix maybe should try on a version of the same thing. Why? I don't know. But it, because it builds- What problem would that it builds, solve? It, it builds trust. It builds more trust. 
and is, you, and and you think Netflix has a trust problem? Uh, no, but I think that in of all the things everybody could use more of, more trust from their customers would be well, one of them. <laughs> sure, okay, but I look at it and I'm like Netflix is by far the most successful video platform that has ever existed bar maybe youtube uh well i, I wouldn't say maybe youtube i would say definitely bar youtube I but mean, bar maybe youtube because i'm i'm not sure if we're comparing apples and oranges when we compare netflix and, and youtube but of its kind netflix is way more successful than any broadcast television network, any cable network, any streaming network. So I feel like Netflix would say, thanks, that's a great idea. No thanks, we're doing great. Uh, and obviously they are. And obviously I'm just doing my Brian thing of speculating wildly. Yeah, yeah. I, what I, and, and the second part of that is doing what we're suggesting here might make things worse, right? It might actually drive down viewership if you start like trying to show them other things, I think Netflix does this, what you're talking about to a certain extent. I think Netflix does say, hey, here's a bunch of categories, right? Uh, th that's their equivalent of portals. Uh, and they have more of them because they have a bigger catalog. Uh, they also will show you things like the Umbrella Project that maybe you're not sure you wanna watch because you tried it. Uh, and that could be a failure or it could be them trying to like continue to like, well, let's just see, let's just see. Maybe we could stretch it. But I think what we're identifying here is it's such a wide variety of things that you are going to have extraordinarily popular shows that you are unfamiliar with unless you are the person who is in the target for them. Yeah, I guess maybe. Especially I, if you're somebody who's outside of the mainstream, which I think both of us are. Well, and, and uh, I, I suspect also, like in general, yes, that's the right choice is whatever the people want, just keep on feeding them what they, what they want. But um, uh, uh, like YouTube is the everything bucket, like, Whatever it is, I bet I could find it on YouTube, right? Netflix is a somewhat curated bucket, and Disney Plus or your Paramount Plus is more, these are our content and we're going to curate it and, and show you the best of what we can get our hands on bucket. But it's like, as, as I go through, I don't know, man, part of me thinks that Netflix is well positioned to to double dog dare me to try some things on, you know, like, uh, and I don't know what the reward would be, but it's like, I know I trust Netflix and I would, I would trust Netflix if, if it, I if think it, they do that. I, I guess that's, that's the, the concept I want to play with. I think they do that. I think if you looked at your Netflix screen right now, you'd find a few things. You're like, well, that's unusual. I wouldn't have guessed they would recommend that to me. They're not the night agent or Ginny in Georgia because those are too far outside of what would be the kinds of things you'd be willing to try. And you're just, and so am I, just different enough from the mainstream Netflix audience that we don't get recommended those. Well, and, Actually, I think and, I did get recommended The Night Agent probably at some point. One way they definitely do that is with the autoplay of like, uh, you know, you open up Netflix on your PC to watch something else and suddenly you're in the middle of a scene from uh, some show you ain't never heard of, but it's like, well, you're engaged. And then so, yeah. you know, it's like, ah, let me give that a try. So may maybe they are doing exactly that. And, and just for whatever reason, I'm it's of the wrong demographic. It's just weird to see that there is a show with 812 million hours viewed that you have not heard of yep. and that that's where i go back to it's because we're in our own bubbles not wa not watching things in netflix just but in talking about stuff uh in the places we talk we are fooled into thinking we're talking to the world and we're absolutely not yeah and this is evidence of that. Right well, and, and and not only that, knowing these are just U.S. numbers only, that means like we're we're this not. This is worldwide. Oh, oh worldwide okay, numbers. worldwide. Okay, well that makes me feel. I don't know why that would make me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> I, it really shouldn't, but it does. Because you can make a concept that like, well, it's obviously the rest of the world watching Ginny and Georgia, this small town <laughs> show about people in New England, not the rest of us Americans. Maybe I don't know. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I, I I don't know either. Uh, it it is weird though. I, I I'm not gonna lie. Like I get why you're like, well, wait a minute. Why don't I know this? And I felt an involuntary sense of wellness when seeing the glory on here. Like, oh, well, I've watched that. Like the, there is something weird about being you know, human beings that makes our mind go, well, I want to have participated in the thing that is popular. Well, in, in the small world, it's like, you know, if you're ever, I don't know, you're waiting for a band and then they're playing pre-show music and then there's like a bizarre indie band. And it's like, yeah, there's something I that makes that. you yeah. feel good about being the one who knows like, oh, you don't know uh, the lipstick insta incident. Oh, God. And I think the other thing that's interesting that's missing here is when we were in high school, you and I, uh, we would have seen the list of Nielsen's top rated shows and we would have known all of them. We might not have watched all of them, but we would have known. And, and in knowing them, we would know why we didn't watch them. We're like, oh, that's just so, that's such a, it's a pa popular show, but it's so pandering. Oh, that's a vapid show. And only old people watch that show. I think what's missing here is that we can't do that because we're people are looking at it and going, yeah, but I don't know these shows. Like I can't say who these are shows are for because I have never heard of them. So uh, how should I feel, Tom? Help. <laughs> I don't think we should feel bad if we don't see shows we like or or watch in the top of this list because this list is just saying what most people around the world are watching. And if anything, if you are not watching the same things, you could comfort yourself if you so desire by saying, well, I have much more eclectic tastes. I don't watch the same things that everyone else watches, which I have a feeling is what the majority of people who look at this will say. Uh, well, they'll find some that they watch, but not all of them. And, and uh, for, uh, for anybody listening, uh, you can find this article. It's on The Verge. Uh, to, it's easy to find the links to it. Uh, play play the game. Uh, scroll down through the top 100 yeah, yeah. and hit us up at cordkillers at gmail.com and let us know how far you get before you feel comfortable <laughs> because I felt very uncomfortable. Yeah, how, how far do you go before you hit a, hit a show you know? How far before you hit a show you watched or loved uh, yeah and then how far before you hit a show you love <laughs> <laughs> three, uh, three different three different benchmarks yeah which frankly it was number three for me because i i watched uh uh new watched and loved the glory um season one man which is it's another one that's interesting because the glory season one uh came out december 30th 2022 but it was one of those things that came out in two parts so the second part came out in june and that boosted it by providing new episodes, of course, but causing a lot of people to go back and watch part one as well. So that that's an interesting twist to this as well. Yeah, I, uh, I if we're going to play heard of, seen, and then liked, um, I guess uh, heard of is Wednesday. That's sure. that's number four on the list, uh, but yeah. that was marketed very heavily. Um, seen, I think I have to get all the way down to. Uh, Oh man, uh, scene. I'm still go oh, Breaking Bad season two. Now we're down to line eighty four. <laughs> Even though you didn't watch it on Netflix, you, you did watch it. Yeah. I did watch it, right? Uh, and then, yeah, I guess I'll, I'd put liked in there as well. But but like as far as like a, a Netflix, like oh my god, you got to watch it. It's on Netflix. I, it's 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 a way down there. I'm. It, this still is a really going. enlightening moment for me, Tom. I, I yeah. must admit. Uh, well, I, I still maintain that that what we're seeing here is that Netflix is mainstream television. It is not prestige television. Everyone's like, well, Netflix needs to be prestige television. This would belie that. And another piece of evidence of that is Netflix is expected to pass Disney Plus in ad revenue next year. Remember, it's it's just been a year since Netflix launched its ad-supported tier. Uh, Disney Plus is looking to rise its ad revenue 16.1%, while Netflix will see a rise of 50.3%. Uh, Netflix is seeing success in its password sharing crackdown, which is driving people to that cheaper tier that's supported by ads. And price rises on other tiers 
as well as Netflix's own tier, are moving folks to that cheaper plan as well. Am, am, am I right in understanding that these are relative numbers, uh, like a 50% increase would, would make Over sense? Over what they had previously. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So so it's like if they're young, you know, a one-year-old is, is or two-year-old is 50% older when they become three, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. that kind of thing. Uh, but, but the total revenue is expected to pass Disney+. Plus. Uh, because Disney is only going to grow 16% above what they have, and Netflix will grow 50% over what it has now. It's had a whole whole year to get going. Uh, so so the expectation is that Netflix is going to just drive right on past them. Uh, that makes sense since they have first mover advantage and they, they literally define the genre. Uh, yeah. but, but, and, and Disney Plus, I suspect, rode a significant wave during the middle of COVID and all of that. But, um, uh, but but still, I, 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 don't don't call it a comeback for uh, for for <laughs> Netflix. Yeah. I, the other and one last thing I want to mention about this this list, it was interesting to see things like Breaking Bad that are not Netflix originals. They're they're things that they have acquired from other providers and, and put back catalogs on. Uh, I feel like we're seeing that more. We are seeing more moving around, and we kind of talked about it last week as well. But I think I, t I started to conceive of the idea that these platforms will require you to subscribe to them based on the things you'll never be able to get somewhere else. So live sports, if, 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 uh, if Max has the live NBA game for your team, uh, you need Max because you're not going to be able to get that next year because it's the game now, right? Whereas a lot of these shows, if you, if you need to see them now, you're going to need to get the place where they're premiering, but maybe you want to get around to watching Breaking Bad next day well, or, or someday, you might just wait for it to come to whatever platform you subscribe to, right? It's on Netflix now. Some of these will be non-exclusive. Some of these will move around as people get tired of them. And so I don't think it's going to be, I need to have all the services if I want to get all the shows. It's, I need to have the services that have the things I need now and the things I can wait for might show up on the service I like eventually. A, a random question. This this was not on the docket, but I, I, I would love to know your take. How soon until we start seeing intentional friction thrown into our over-the-top services the way cable did? How, how soon until we see it? Because we've always sung the praises of it's super easy. You press the button, it's on. You press the button, it's off. How, how soon until they take that away from us? Yeah. I think that I'm, I'm going to guess that we don't see that until consolidation reaches a certain point where there are fewer choices. Uh, right now, they all benefit from the the lack of friction because it's it means they are also able to get people from other places. Uh, there's also the we we want to convince you to sign up for us instead of cable. Look, that's a big advantage. Once cable is gone and it's just not a viable option, and you're down to maybe two or three big platform bundles, right? Multiple services, but you know it's a Disney bundle and a Netflix bundle. Then I then I can see them starting to mess around with that kind of stuff. Uh, is there a service out there that provides content truly of value that you're able to pay literally whatever you want mm -hmm. and you can adjust it on the fly? Just just like like that, like no big deal. Yeah, where you where you can leave, you can come back, you can give Brian a raise. Uh, yeah, I, I, that would be great if if there was some kind of way for you to to become a patron of the thing you love. Oh, I, 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 you know what? I, I don't know why I said that. I have, head on over to patreon.com slash cord killers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what are we asking from our bosses? <laughs> this is one of those weird things where it's like we charge our bosses. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, you, you, you aren't our boss unless you pay us. <laughs> that's, yes. that's what makes you the boss, right? You, you write the big check, you, you're employing us. Uh, so, uh, you too can become one of our bosses and boss us around. Just, uh, give us $3 and 76 cents, uh, an episode at patreon.com slash cord killers. Yeah. Uh, and now with a new feature called posting on time, <laughs> which we'll talk about Thanks, later boss. on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get on to the search party. 
Apple announced it will create a TV series based on the Murderbot novels written by Martha Wells. Uh, the showrunner of Foundation, David S. Goyer, is a producer. Uh, producers Chris and Paul Weitz will serve as showrunners for this. Uh, Chris wrote Rogue One and directed the film version of Golden Compass. They both worked on the American Pie movies. And they have cast Alexander Skarsgård, you might remember him from Succession. He was the the VC guy, uh, the tech guy. He was also in True Blood, played a vampire. Uh, he has been cast in the lead role as the murder bot itself, the sec unit, uh, planned to debut in 2025. And I was so excited, Brian, when you asked me earlier today, do you know this series? Yeah, I was about uh, to say, like, like, uh, uh, please tell me why I should love it in advance. You should get the audiobooks for the murder bot series and just start with number one and go they're novellas uh most of them so they are they are fast uh listens uh murder bot is a security unit who hacks himself well they hack themselves uh i should say uh to uh, have free will one day and then get away from the corporation uh and become an independent person and they get away from uh the the corporate rim uh go to an independent world uh and try to live life uh, as at least an augmented human they could pass as an augmented human but they don't really know how humans uh, uh act uh in fact they have to learn how to walk like a human so they can't immediately be identified as a sec unit. Uh, they hook up with some scientists, go out on missions, and they are a murder bot. That's how they refer to themselves. But they rarely murder unless they really need to and only on behalf of their friends. Uh, what they'd rather do is just relax and consume their shows like uh, Sanctuary Moon at, you know, the pace of an entire season every 12 seconds. All right. Uh, and then just rewatch them. What am I signing up for right now? Am I signing up for like a Dresden Files thing where it's going to be a bazillion D uh, books? It's, I think it's like seven novels now. Okay. And, and again, most of them are novellas, not, not full. I think there's only like two full novels in there. Okay. I have a choice. I can either get all systems read or all systems read dram dramatized adaptation. Ooh, I haven't done the dramatized. I've only done, done the main. Maybe. So I, I can't speak to the dramatized. You know what? Maybe I'll do that just to, just to give you a different take. All right. Bot done. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of concern about casting Alexander Skarsgård uh, because it's not clear what the gender of Murderbot is, uh, even though the audiobook that is not dramatized is read by, by a male narrator. Uh, and also, Alexander Skarsgård is extremely hot, uh, and people aren't sure if Murderbot is supposed to be hot or not uh but hey you know I mean, what? Dave, I mean, a pretty if, good actor so if, if i, I, I were his agent i would say hey why don't you you know issue some pr statements where you're not entirely sure what gender you are <laughs> then that way it'll fit no matter what yeah yeah uh but nonetheless i am extremely excited uh to see Murderbot uh hit hit the screen uh i hope it's done well did not like golden compass did like Rogue One okay, uh, and did did like Foundation. So um, yeah, I'm 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 gonna lean towards positive until I. Are you I'm doing? Are you doing that thing that we always get with the animes and the video game adaptations, yeah. where something's so precious to you, you're afraid to see it adapted into something no, that might I'm be not. bad? I'm not afraid to see it adapted. I'm looking at who's adapting it, and I'm like, I'm all for adapting it. Oh, I haven't loved everything these folks have done, so I hope they do a great job with this one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, James Cameron told People Magazine that Avatar 3 is on track for a December 19th, 2025 release. He also said it will have more character depth than previous Avatar movies. Uh, revealed that some of Avatar 4 
was shot along with Avatar 3 because there will be a time jump forward six years. So they wanted to shoot some of the younger characters while they were young. Uh, and then their later scenes after Avatar 3 comes out, they will shoot later when they have grown up. Uh, so they will actually be, you know, they won't be using CGI to make them look younger or older. They'll, they'll be the actual age when they shot those. Uh, and Avatar 4 is still on the schedule to come out December 21st, 2029. Avatar 5 will come out December 19th, 2031. Is is it too cheap of a shot to say, oh, more character? You mean you'll add character? I, I, it's like, <laughs> like um, and, I and, and I, and I, I know if it's a cheap shot or not, Brian, but a similar thought crossed my mind. I, I, and keep in mind, this comes from a, a, a place of appreciation. One thing I've always appreciated about James Cameron's work is that he keeps it dead simple. Who's this tough broad? Who's this person you think is blank turns out to be blank? Uh, but but uh, in fact, the nuance of the most recent Avatar was the thing that frustrated me the most on it because I'm like, yeah. what am I having to think at a James Cameron movie? What are you doing? Yeah, I, well, that, I, that's really what crossed my mind is me going, but is character depth what people want from Avatar? Uh, I mean, I guess it's not a bad thing, but that's not why people show up. Uh, yeah, I guess loosely translated in Brianese, what he said was, hey, Brian, the thing you liked least in the, my most recent work, more of it. Look for it. More of it. Now, <laughs> I'm still going to get you in the theater, Brushwood. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, that's the thing. <laughs> it's, it's like, whatever, man. That whale chopped off that dude's arm. <laughs> yeah, yep. Exactly. And now in the next movie, we'll get to know the whale before it chops off someone's arm. That's <laughs> Uh, Good Omens season three is a go. Uh, we, we didn't doubt that it was coming, but it's now been made official. Uh, filming will begin soon in Scotland. It's based on notes that Neil Gaiman made with the late Terry Pratchett and will deal with the end of the world again. Season two was kind of a bridge to this story. This is the story that is based on the notes. Uh, it uh, Neil Gaiman said, the plans for Armageddon are going wrong. Only Crowley and Aziraphale working together can hope to put it right. And they aren't talking. So, so, uh, uh, part 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 of what I think both of us liked about this most recent season is is that it kept things small. It, you know, there's big world and small world. Season one was very much big world insofar as we're talking about the end of the universe. <laughs> but but this was small world of two people who are trying to establish uh, exactly what they mean to each other. Um, It'll be interesting to see if uh, Neil Gaiman is able to pull off uh, making it big again, because uh, as, as you and I have discussed, I was not terribly a fan of, of what he did with American Gods. Yeah, and, and yet he made it big in season one, so fingers crossed. Uh, we got another Dune trailer, speaking of big. Uh, Dune Part 2 comes out March 1st, and the new trailer is the most Dune-y of them all so far. <laughs> it's, 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 I mean, <laughs> there's worms and Fremen and still suits and prophecies and... Uh, I I don't remember, uh, and you probably <laughs> remember the books better than I do. But uh, but but uh, in my mind, uh, I've always associated the ornithopters, the the cool dragonfly things, uh, as as being kind of a uh, a uh, oh, wait what? I have a sandworm book bookshelf. Oh, so you're probably right. Yeah. I, I I thought you were pointing to the window that says set up professional audio in audio settings. <laughs> no, no, I can't see that window. <laughs> Um, the, but but uh, uh, it it looked as though they were portraying him as being still carrying the torch for House Atreides when you know in the book by this point he's you know just a native he's he's one of the Fremen at this point. Well, there there is a bit of carrying the torch for House Atreides when he first shows up which we we just see him show up at the end of part one. So 
it's hard to tell from the trailer if it's like, oh, no, this is just the part right at the beginning and then he's going to go the full Fremen uh, or not. So, yeah, that, it'll be interesting to see if that's dragged out a little more. I'll tell you what, though, the production values look extraordinary. And uh, uh, it, 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 uh, it, of course, this was delayed because of the strike. Uh, I don't know who was and wasn't allowed to work on what during the strike. But if somebody was allowed to work, seems like that would be a good time to fill in some gaps with some excellent CGI. <laughs> <laughs> to make some yeah, yeah. excellent cinematic scenes. Uh, and then uh, there's a trailer out for a new fantasy film written, directed by and starring John Krasinski and Ryan Reynolds called If. It tells the story of what happens to your imaginary friends. Uh, and so the spin is uh, this person, I think Ryan Reynolds' character, uh collects all the imaginary friends after people grow up and don't play with them anymore. Uh, and the story is about reacquainting them and finding homes for them and uh, keeping your inner child alive. Uh, and Steve Carell voices a large purple creature. Uh, once again, if set for release May 17th, 2024. Yeah. Um, this looks extraordinarily cliche however that's a long list of very talented people uh do, do you have an instant take on it a cliche what do you mean by cliche is it in the sense of like oh you should regain your childlike wonder or else you're dead yeah. inside or, or, or you know cliche. it's yeah, like yeah. oh we were loved i mean it's toy story it's like we were loved and then yeah, discarded yeah. that kind I, of thing I, I I totally get that, uh, but like you said, it's a big long line of talent, and Krasinski and Ryle Reynolds together, like that's a lot of that's a lot of talent for me right up, right up top, and they they've got a cast of their friends uh, from their various works involved here. So, if it can rise above that cliche, I think this is the kind of team that would pull it off. If. I get you see what I did there. Uh, a few fast facts here. Netflix renewed the critically acclaimed animated series Blue Eyed Samurai for a second season. Uh, Disney announced that its upcoming Eyes of Wakanda animated series will tell the stories of multiple warriors from different points in Wakanda's history. Bridgerton season three will return this spring in two parts. First part arrives May 16th, second part on June 13th. And Larry David announced that season 12 of Curb Your Enthusiasm coming February 4th will be its last uh, and made some humorous remarks about how he can stop portraying that vile Larry David character in Curb Your Enthusiasm and go back to being the sweet, wonderful man that he really is. Uh, so I guess Curb Your Enthusiasm ran longer than Seinfeld itself, right? Yeah. Seinfeld ran nine seasons. Uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm ran 12 seasons, but also had a six year break between two of its seasons. So both season wise and by years, it ran longer than Seinfeld. And on, on top of that, the format is, you know, uh, different enough where it's like a Curb Your Enthusiasm embraced kind of kind of sloppy, like, hey, here's some bullet points. Let's just talk like like I would imagine that's uh, less of a grind than it's like, no, everything has to be chrome like polished down to the very line like we saw in Seinfeld. Yeah. All right. Uh, it is time for some buried treasure. That's me digging for the, the treasure. Brian, what have you been watching? Oh, man. I, I, I wish I had something new for you guys. But um, uh, now that my kids are back, we're finally watching more Detroiters. Uh, like, that's one that the whole family has said, don't you dare watch an episode without us. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, wow, yeah. And, 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 and you guys know how much I love uh, I Think You Should Leave and uh, uh, the work of Sam Richardson in uh, The After Party. Detroiters is like to see that nucleus that dna being generated uh that joyful uh friendship with, with uh him and uh, uh tim robinson is fantastic it's great uh, please everybody watch detroiters uh bring back De detroiters yes more detroiters uh or at the very least windsor ontarioers what that's the the canadian town that's south of detroit oh uh, T-I-L. Well, that'd be a fun sequel, right? Um, I want to give a little shout out to For All Mankind in the midst of its season right now, uh, just because when I go through the list of things I'm watching, uh, there are some things that I'm 
watching because, you know, well, we're going to watch the pilot of the West Wing. So this is what I'm doing. Miami Vice, whatever. Right. There are things that I watch because Eileen and I watch them together and it's, you know, it's fun to watch. There, there are things that I watch maybe out of habit, you know, that it's like, oh, well, I've watched the, the whole thing so far. I guess I'll just keep watching it for all mankind is one that I, I do enjoy. I get excited. Like, Ooh, I get to watch a new for all mankind because it's in space and it's pretty. And I've spent so much time with these characters now that I, I, I really know them and it's fun that they fast forwarded. So even though it's only been a few seasons, like I have seen the entire lifespan of multiple characters and now they're getting old. Um, and it's, it's, you know, parallel universe, uh, alternate reality where the Soviet Union never fell, but they always do interesting things to weave in like events that would, that are sort of similar to what actually happened. But, you know, for instance, uh, Gorbachev still, uh, has a problem, even though the Soviet Union doesn't fall and it, stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, I, a big, big shout out to For All Mankind. Uh, and I will mention this again at some point, but I'm still watching My Demon as it comes out uh, week to week on Netflix. Uh, and in fact, if you want to know a little more about what I think about my demon, Eileen Rivera and I uh, did a live stream of, of what we're streaming this weekend, Brian, at youtube.com slash daily tech news show. And we just we sat down and chatted about what we've been watching. So I, I uh, for all mankind, I remember at the very beginning, the first season was a little bit wobbly and and I'm that made me skittish, but it sounds like it, it's landed Why so well. Why did you think it was wobbly? What was wobbly for oh, you? Because uh, I didn't feel that about the first season. Okay, well, uh, 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 first of all, this is the guy that did Battle Battlestar Galactica, right? Um, yes, uh, Ronald D. Moore. Uh, and it, it, it was a little bit hobbled by reputation for being from a brand new streaming service of uh, Apple TV Plus. Um, so uh, I think maybe it was outshone for me by Ted Lasso. But uh, but but mm -hmm. if you're, if, if you know, I trust you a lot. And and if if you're if you give me the word, say the word, Captain, and and I'll get caught up. <laughs> our our tastes don't always match up because I'm willing to put up with a lot more BS than you are. Uh, that would be my only thing with For All Mankind is, I. If this plot starts to drag a little, I still enjoy looking at space. You know, I still enjoy looking at nostalgia stuff when it's back in the the seventies and eighties. Uh, and and every time they do like uh, a deep faked uh, pre pre President Gary Hart had this to say. I'm like, oh, every okay, time they pull a, a Forrest Gump, you're in for it. you're into it. Whereas it's, I, yeah, it's yeah. Forrest <laughs> Gump and alternate universe, right? Yeah, so it's like it's like double. Uh, I into it so if if you're not worried that that stuff will not be enough to keep you going i i think it is a really compelling storyline too okay all right well, well i i i trust ronald d Moore enough that i'll i'll, I'll and there's an alternate three universe seasons SpaceX in. in it which i we've actually been inside of spacex so that was kind of fun to say that was cool wasn't it yeah. uh well folks if you have suggestions for what we should watch please email us cordkillers at gmail.com i don't know how they're going to do that brian except maybe you could get a doghouse system uh you know what it's the only computer that exists i, 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 I take a look at your computer right now does it say the words doghouse systems Mine have does. you considered the fact that it may not be a real computer. I'm, I'm just asking questions here, man. If, <laughs> if you want a real computer with real support <laughs> made right here in the U.S. of A., uh, or assembled right here in the U.S. of A. Head on over to doghousesystems.com slash rogue. Spell it right, R-O-G-U-E. You'll get a free SSD, but most importantly, you'll be keeping us in business. In the business. Uh, what do you got going on, Brian? Uh, a secret thing that I'm going to announce on my email list. Um, uh, look, it, it, even if you don't want something for free, if you go to gimme.scamstuff.com, just sign up for whatever the latest giveaway is, and you'll end up on my email list. Uh, I've been quiet about the fifth annual Founders Day event. 
Uh, and that's partly been because I, I, it, it's not clear to me how many people we could accommodate. But at this point, we have uh, two I, – I, I think we have two different facilities where people can drive up and stay to be there for the eclipse. We have talent who's arranged to do a jaw-dropping performance that will have the right song at the right moment just as the moon eats the sun on the fire year anniversary of the founding of the modern rogue world headquarters um i've been quiet i'm about to not get quiet get on that email list that's all i'll say indeed all right get on the email list folks yes now it's time to scan the horizon Google is saying goodbye to Google Play Movies and TV as it has already moved Android and iOS users to the Google TV app, removed the app from every Roku and most smart TVs, and pulled the app from Android TV in October. Although Google Play Movies and TVs will be gone in January, you will be able to access and watch all the shows and movies you already purchased through the Google TV app as well as YouTube. Can, uh, uh, can we do a, a call out to anybody who is personally affected by this? This is one of those stories where I am. Wait, 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 Tom, tell me, tell me how you're affected by this. I mean, there, I have purchased movies that were in Google Play movies and TV, and now I have to remember to go to YouTube to watch them. That's how I'm affected. <laughs> Uh, okay, all right. I want, I want more pain. Give me more pain. Okay. Someone right, more out pain. there. Cornkillers at gmail.com. <laughs> uh, if you don't pay, pay for YouTube Premium, you'll see longer ad breaks now, but there will there will be fewer of them when you're watching TV, uh, at least on a TV. The idea is to make it more like other kinds of TV advertising. In other words, you get to the break, the break's going to be longer, but there'll be fewer of the breaks. Um, yeah. That kind Unlike of on your mobile device, when you're on your mobile device, you're going to get multiple breaks, but they're going to they're going to change the break structure if it can tell you're watching on a television. To to be honest, I, I, I am I a bad person if I say I think that's a good idea because because you're you're accustomed so. to that, like you're speaking the language. I mean, you're only a bad person in that you're enabling people to give us ads, and of course, as everyone knows, ads are evil, and you're evil if you say anything that enables ads. Yeah, but what if you run a business that thrives on <laughs> ad revenues? <laughs> Listen, man, I I think this is a smart idea. Uh, I think paying for YouTube Premium uh, makes sense, even with the price rises. Uh, if you really look at the things they offer, and and you want those things, if you don't want those things, it probably doesn't make sense. Uh, and so I don't see these ads. Uh, so I really can't speak from a personal standpoint. But when you're watching on TV, uh, getting TV-like ad breaks means you're less likely to think anything's weird and you're going to continue to watch. I mean, if anything, like like when you're watching in a TV, you're likely – when you're watching on a mobile device, you're probably watching by yourself, right? When you're watching at a TV, you're probably watching with your family or a group of other people, which means when there's a break, some of you are going to want to go to the bathroom. Go that to kind of, bathroom. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It, it, the rules are different for different devices. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, tell me about this tvOS update. No. Okay. okay. As part of the tvOS 17.2 <laughs> update, Apple made changes to the interface of its Apple TV app. A new sidebar in the Apple TV app now makes it easy to find non-Apple services like Max, Disney Plus, and others. Also, <laughs> the iTunes apps on iPad and iPhone, as well as the TV shows or movies app on Apple TV, will now redirect you to the Apple TV app. Uh, the store tabs on the Apple TV app now let you sign up for streaming services, as well as rent and buy TV shows and movies. So similar to Google, they're getting rid of the old school apps that were meant simply for TV shows and movies and just bringing it all in the Apple TV app. But they're not trying to be like, and then you should only watch Apple stuff. They're making it easier for you to see the other things that you can get through your Apple TV. Today, we replaced Brian's Tom Merritt with a little bit of Justin Robert Young. <laughs> Let's see if he notices. <laughs> <laughs> you got your Justin in my Tom. Uh, I'm sorry about that. I no, it was great. Why. It was, it was <laughs> the best part of my day, um, uh, especially because I have no opinions about this technical mumbo jumbo. <laughs> Meanwhile, Comcast 
Comcast launched its Zumo branded streaming box available to Xp Xfinity internet customers at no extra charge after a $15 ac <laughs> activation fee, though additional boxes cost $5 a month. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so cable. No extra charge, just an activation <laughs> fee. Hey, oh, wait. you want a second box? I, That's $5 a month. Uh, uh, speaking of which, which a uh, quick side jag. Uh, I, I listened to uh, uh, the stories of the Times uh, from the London newspaper, the Times, and at the end, like they they they're really pushing this uh, Amazon ad free podcasting. It's like, would you like podcasts that are totally ad free, ad free uh -huh. podcasts? And then it does the uh, the fine print at the end, and in the fine print it says uh, something 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 something. Also, there may be ads. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Uh, Variety reports that as streaming platforms start paying more attention to cost, they're agreeing to more co-productions and co-windowing deals instead of perpetual global rights to everything. The idea is to pay for something once and monetize it repeatedly by circulating it across different services. Uh, this lets platforms constantly offer their subscribers new content, which has more impact as subscribers limit how many services they subscribe to. This is what I was talking about earlier in the show. Uh, here's an example. Fox's two reached a deal with Warner Brothers Discovery to get access to dozens of DC movies. That includes The Batman and Wonder Woman, a bunch of others. Most are available right now on Tubi, uh, with more to arrive in 2024. Uh, Tubi also got some DC TV series. Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, will begin streaming December 31st. And Tubi's getting some non-DC movies and TV shows from Warner as well. Uh so, uh, uh, w w w what does this mean in terms of like, are, are we about to see a great divide? Like, are we going to see a consolidation on the paid platforms and uh, just an anything goes on the on the? This is what I was ones? trying to describe earlier. I think what we're going to see is less exclusives. So there's going to be more companies going. Well, we sunk all this money in it. Let's pay. Let's get money back from as many platforms as possible. The exclusivity isn't worth the juice. Uh, I think there's also going to be rotation. So, you know, let's say uh, DC has a, a set of DC series where they're like, you know what? These don't do as well on Max anymore because they're old and all of the really true serious DC fans have already watched them. Let's license these out to Tubi. And then Tubi has them for a year. And then Tubi has the same thing of like, okay, all the people who wanted to watch these have watched them. And then Warner Max Warner is like, well, let's license them out to Paramount Plus now. And then we can license them out to uh, Pluto later on, you know, et cetera, et cetera and move it around and around. So I think we're going to see older library shows start to move from place to place. Yeah, uh, which in a weird way is kind of same as it ever was, right? I mean, it's right. like, it's like going back to the welcome syndication to syndication. Model. Yeah, exactly. And finally, Fathom Events brought in a record $93 million driven in large part by faith-based series like The Chosen and the movie The Blind. Fathom Events is co-owned by AMC, Cinemark, and Regal. I didn't know that till I read this. I didn't realize they were co-owned by all three. Um, yeah, I, I, I think there's a lot of... Uh, 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 Netflix makes a big, big deal of, of loudly uh, buying into various niches. Uh, I mean, I, meanwhile, there's a lot of other players who are buying a lot of other small niches. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, and and I think Fathom Events is getting more popular, not just because they're leaning into niches like that, but but also because there's more theater capacity. So they can, they can try more things and, and figure out what works. Yep. All right, let's move on to the chatter. Oh, I think that was supposed to be scanning the horizon. No, no, no. Uh, we got an email from Brian. This is not you. This is a different Brian. I feel like I missed something. Is Bryce no longer with the show? Oh, wait. No, this is from Jeremy. Sorry, I was about to I, say. I, misread it. I think you, you, are, you, I think you read Brian. my comment on it. Yeah. You're still Brian. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I missed something. Is Bryce no longer with the show, Jeremy? Uh, what happened to Bryce, Brian? I forgot. Uh, I, I, we talk all about it in the After Talk segment, which is available to patrons only. Uh, so become a patron, and you can hear what we labeled his exit interview. Uh, uh, long story short, uh, uh, Bryce has been with us for nine years. He cut his teeth, and he's ready to find out what, you know, what the wider world has for him, and we couldn't be more proud. 
Uh, and then Bernie wrote in and said, I'm sure you covered this somewhere, but your website, cordkillers.com, hasn't been updated <laughs> since when Bryce left. <laughs> okay. uh, the RSS <laughs> is still updating the current episodes, though. I'm wondering if you're going to point the URL somewhere else after the new year. Sorry if you've covered this already. Right. So here's the other side of Bryce leaving is that Brian has to re... It's, it's not that he never knew how this stuff worked. <laughs> it's that it's been nine years since he went to the gym. And so uh, the good news is we got all of the content caught up hopefully and uh, uh, with any luck tonight I'll be able to post everything on time Tom and I are figuring out uh, 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 clever workflows because uh, believe it or not in in uh, as we approach 2024 we're still running on 2012 solutions and we're trying to fix that <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and that, that brings us to some housekeeping. Uh, first of all, uh, next week is, uh, the Monday is Christmas day. And the week after that Monday is January 1st. And then the week after that, I'll be at the consumer electronics show, uh, covering that for daily tech news show. So the next episode of cord killers will be January 15th, right? Uh, officially, but as we were talking about, like one of the things we're trying to do is to, you know, make the workflow more efficient. So uh, uh, heads up, I may do something kooky, like interview one of my daughters and find out uh, shows they like and, and talk to them about it and release it on the feed. It'll be a bonus. It'll be free, uh, but it'll, it'll help us to kind of understand the most efficient way for us to keep doing everything that we do for you. Oh, that would be cool. I, I I can't wait for that. I I don't know which daughter I want to hear from the most. I, neither do I. <laughs> uh, I I know which daughter I'll have to ride the volume fader the hardest on, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh huh. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the Killy Awards, of course, uh, ha have been under controversy with the writers' strike and SAG-AFTRA and AI. Uh, but we're looking forward to to holding the Killies after the first of the year. So don't, don't fret. We're, we're, we're taking our cues from you, you Hollywood. We learned it you from watching it you first. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, COVID. I forgot to mention COVID. So yeah, strikes and COVID excuses and unions and, and, yeah. and uh, AI. Indeed. Uh, well, that's it for us. Uh, our website really is cordkillers.com. <laughs> Our email address is cordkillers at gmail.com. We're live on twitch.tv slash night attack, Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. I reckon we'll talk to you next time. Well, I, I started playing that music too early, didn't I? Yeah. It's not, it's not playing. No, I played it underneath me. I talked over the whole thing. Oh. Should, should, should <laughs> I do, should I do the, should I, should I do it? No, I mean, I could play it again if you want. Yeah, okay. Now you've heard it twice.